Hey, I'm Dilvin. I'm hanging with Rob on Front Row Live. Let's go. Super excited with this EP, man. Like this is such a masterpiece that you just created and like really like diving into it. Just the opener track to me, like I'm a huge Angel, Angels and Airwaves fan. So the opener of that, like the first like 30, 40 seconds of that, like really reminded me of like Tom DeLonge and like recording all these like trinkets to create like sound out of nothing. And it was really cool to kind of experience that with that that opening track, Brothers. Um Let's dive in and talk about that creative process with this with this EP and like what really like inspired this like stylistic sound that you've created. Dude, I that caught me by a great surprise. <laughs> like Angels and Airwaves, my friend Anthony, who's in the band with me when we do live shows and write music with yeah. me, he's a huge Angels and Airwaves fan. And ever since I was a kid, I grew up listening to Blink, um, Angels and Airwaves when Tom, you know, yeah. did his thing and then went back over there. And I think it definitely had a part in kind of where I'm at now. Cause I always, or where I came with that song. Cause I yeah. domino affect everything. Like he knows I freaking um, <laughs> Rob over there, but I, I, uh, I tend to domino affect everything back to when I had started music or even listening as I was a kid, like yeah. a lot of Tom Petty and shit. And um, yeah, brothers, that one was wild because I was sitting in there with John Samuel kind of talking about my life and just in general of how I got to where I got musically. Cause I started relatively late compared to a lot of my friends mm. and i always loved you know singing and doing you know singing in the car and doing stuff with music i just felt it always gave me such a good feeling and um brothers in general was kind of all about my friends and how they have got me to the point of where i'm at right yeah. now in my career and i i wanted to like i anytime i'm doing stuff like this i get like I get like sort of, I guess you would call it anxiety about like, <laughs> th like wanting them to always feel like they're a part of it. Yeah. And when they're not, when they're not with me, I want them to know like I'm doing as much as I can to make this dream come true for them. Yeah. And no matter what I'm doing, I'm always there for them. And that's what that kind of song was. So we want to make it like this, or John Sam was like, dude, we got to make this go crazy. And then, and then actually, now that you bring that up, it he had actually made the that instrumental and it just it was right after we had, yeah talked about that entire like relationship with all my friends and all the yeah. people i care about and wanting to do this for them more than even me yeah but yeah I forgot what I was going to say for a little bit. And then I was like, oh, but we good. No, it's we all good. good. But it's like, it's such an incredible body of work. Tell them stories, uh, four tracks. And at first seeing four tracks, I was like, man, this is a tease. Like, four tracks. I don't know if it's going to be enough, but like I'm listening to it and it's on repeat. And I'm like, this is like the perfect amount of music that you kind of created with this, with this body of work. Um, I love the fact that you brought in John Samuels. You've been working with Joey Spurgeon for some time. And yeah. uh, this is the first time that you're with, with, with Samuel. And just right now he's just really like starting to like make a name for himself as well. Like he just got the cycle oh, yeah. publishing endorsement earlier this year. Um, and just doing incredible stuff. Like, so I love this teamwork and collaboration that you guys have together, but what was it about him that really drew your attention to kind of bring him on board for this EP? John Samuel, <laughs> <laughs> actually his, um, manager about a year ago, I would say reached out to me and had said like, yo, I think, you know, you guys would be a good fit working together. Yeah. Shout out to Chris, by the way. Yeah, shout out to Chris. I can't thank him enough for making <laughs> this all even possible. Like in meeting one of my best friends now, I, it was probably, it was one of the first, I had done one session with someone I hadn't like met before, mm. like just recently because my manager Rob had told me like, yo, you need to get in those DMs yeah. and not give a, you know. Just make it happen. And it was weird. It's weird how the world works. There's so many like, things that start to happen as you talk about them and manifest them. And that day, some homie, this was before that actually, uh, we'll get through it after, but some homie had hit me up and then I ended up meeting up with someone. And mm. then John Samuel, that email happened like pretty recently after he had told me that. And I was like, Damn. I, uh, I was like, what the heck? But he sent the email and, uh, I ended up going to John Samuel's place and it felt like I'd known him my entire life. Right. When I had, um, met him yeah. er, and from there on we talked for like 
I feel like an hour or two before we even started like cooking up some music and how much I, uh, you know, just love, you know, being around my friends and it, doing this whole music thing with them and wanting to bring mm -hmm. along the ride with me. Yeah. And then, yeah, you just felt like a best friend. And I feel like that's most important when you're cooking up some music is being with someone that, you know, you vibe with really well. Yeah. And definitely John Samuels that, and he keeps me on my tiptoes. I, yeah, I'm sure. Like, I <laughs> yeah. feel like, I feel like you kind of stepped out of your comfort zone a lot with this EP, um, yeah. listening to your previous material. So how did that really, like, how did he get you to, to be okay? Like stepping out and what would you say was like that biggest challenge that you kind of faced during this recording process? I feel like the biggest challenge was when I was so used to doing stuff a certain way and not that it was a bad way necessarily, but he was like, there's no tomorrow. Yeah. Like we got to finish this shit today. And mentally, especially during the first session, I was just like, I've never worked this fast. Yeah. And um, mentally and writing and everything about that whole process within that first day was like, I was almost just like, oh shit. Like I was just nervous. Like I was uncomfortable, but mm. in like the best way possible. Yeah. And I feel like that kept happening as we made the following songs where you would challenge me vocally and challenge me just to like express myself in ways that I hadn't before and be like super upfront to the whole world. And I feel like it emulates my whole entire self and just yeah. four songs, you know, how did that impact the cadences that you were going to, you know, give us throughout this, this entire body of work? The, uh, Oh, him pushing me. Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I feel like it led to ultimately that song tiptoes, which is being like confident as hell and what, what's going on with yeah. your life. And we had had a moment happen with drunk on drugs. And there was that whole moment of like seeing like dreams or like uh, goals that you had like very close. Mm -hmm. And when those are happening, you start to feel weird. Cause you're like, you have to start setting like higher standards for yourself. Yeah. And even the people around you, you have to be like, this shit's going to happen, you know? And when that was happening, we're like, he had showed me some guitar riff that was like a little bit different than a lot of things I had done. And, but it was dope. And we're like, let's just go for it. I feel like no matter what I'm going to sing or whatever we're going to say here is going to yeah. portray me, you know? And it did in the best way, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two of my favorite songs are brothers, obviously, and, and happier, happier yes. is incredible. Hell yeah. Dude. Um, take me into the studio, that creative process of happier. What kickstarted it for you? And, you know, what was your mentality coming into it as like, all right, I want to try something different. Um, how did you go? How did you go into it? I think so going into that session, I think that was the first session after <laughs> Tell Them Stories, which is the first song I had done with John Samuel. Mm. And I had talked, what was, oh, there's, yeah, it was the first session. And I was just talking to him about a lot, what I, like about what I was going through yeah. and having that moment with drunk on drugs and kind of feeling this confidence but yet still going through that ups and downs of like the anxiety of like wanting to get what you want so fast, but it's going to be a process. Mm. And I, I wanted to talk about, you know, just be super literal with it. And he, I, I told him, I really want to make songs that I can play with the band that are just go super hard. Yeah. And that are just like belong, like they belong to, or like they, what's the word? They belong on stage. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't even say stage. I would say more like anthemic, like, yeah, anthemic, arena. Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And I think that was a good challenge for myself because I sometimes will just go off and try to do something super creative. Mm. And we wanted to make something, you know, too more anthemic, but also be super true to me and what I was going through at that time. And John Samuel is, his intuition is just like ridiculous. So, like, I, like anything I would say or do anything he would say, it was like he could follow that with his production and yeah. such like an emotional way that just ties to that. And that first drop you hear, we were, I was like, I told him like, dude, we got to do it twice. <laughs> and he's like, no, dude, that's why it hits. It's going to hit way harder if we only do it once, you know, and then go crazy. <laughs> and then we kind of brought in like the, the like little rock, uh, you know, influence. The elements. Yeah. Yeah. And it has got like, I swear like five, genres in one well that's what that's what i loved about happier because like it it like it's sonically stimulating yeah um and it, it's like there's signature changes left and right there's like different sounds and styles and like i don't know you 
it's i feel like that's something that's hard to kind of like tackle and like be able to like execute and i feel like you did that with happier yeah john samuel's a menace <laughs> john samuel's a menace i put the soul into that one and he he definitely he just he can feel what i'm feeling yeah and i feel like it takes a special talent to do that and and that's what's been stressful too about this whole process of like meeting a lot of people it's like connecting with so many dope people and wanting to be there for them yeah. all the time and being with them all the time so i feel like even now i'm caught in that moment where i'm like i have to say no and yeah. i'm not used to saying no you yeah because i just love you know being with people it kind of it's hard yeah but it's hard but you got to do what's best for the craft too so yeah. it's like i feel you know as an artist like I feel like going into the studio, whether it's a writing session or a producer, like it has to be the right fit or else like we're going to, we're going to see how bad it was when, yeah. when it drops. Right. Like yeah. no hundred percent. dude. <laughs> what excites you the most about this, this EP that just dropped? I feel it's like, it's spicy, dude. It's got, I, it's different. I know it's something different than what's out there and that's what excites me. And I yeah. think sometimes why I can't sleep at night is what I think it belongs with the best. Yeah. But it not being there yet, I have to tell myself every day it's a process and it's going to happen. It's not going to, it might not happen like everyone else. Like, Oh, when there's a big pre-release thing or like it's something's going to happen. It's gonna happen yeah. different for me. And maybe it'll go, it'll go crazy at some point. Yeah. And I, I believe in it so much. I, and I, I, it's cool to see people like, you know, you really, uh, believe in it as well yeah well i i'm hoping that happier becomes one of those like singles that <laughs> everybody go. just gets obsessed with because uh, i feel like that like from the beginning like i was just like this is sick like hell yeah dude so Thanks. i i'm super excited for this ep I'm, I'm excited that i got connected with you um and like too, dude. you know it's cool that we get to see you like early on not so early on but still like we get to see that progression and like you know coming from here to what you're eventually going to be once like more ears get to listen to your music Hell so yeah dude uh dylan i'm super excited to be hanging with you thank you so much for taking the time thank you dude and uh you guys be sure give me to a check out again, dylan yeah. uh his new ep is out now it's called tell them stories it's a masterpiece check it out <laughs>